very interesting. The list has come up. So I know Evan was not happy about this matchup. Here we see Dan Wagnall. Uh, it's a get, rough matchup for Evan. He's Dan's brought a medalist. He's brought plot armor because mm -hmm. he knows that Evan's a tough opponent, and he wanted to have uh, uh, a fighting chance in this match. Something and in his holster to deal. Yep. Evan's brought something pretty fighty. He's got a PS9 Whisper. That's a solid ship. And then some Zeta leader, some Zeta specialists, some FOs with with uh, lightweight frame and and uh, fire control system. Just some solid multi-action generics. Like it's gonna be a real tough fight. If Notice you that number two of the two Zeta specialists is also gonna be featuring advanced optics, but not oh, number I three. Oh, I see. I see. Now Dan having a, a, a not symmetrical squad, much like he had last time, where he had two ships with advanced, with right. uh, comms relay and one with prime thrusters. He's comfortable with having ships with different roles. Evan, you mean? But yeah. Evan, yeah. Sorry, my apologies. No and so it'll be very interesting to see. Now I know Dan's got a weak rock game. He's going to do his best. Uh, he doesn't throw him down wherever, but he, he he's Evan's certainly got a plan. He seems right? to be making space, and I think giving himself. If Evans, but Dash doesn't need space or want space. So with Dash, you want to clump all the rocks together, right, and hide Dash in there because he don't care, right? He really does not care. Now, I mean, there's some difference of opinion about this. If these are nicely spread out. They can interfere with Evans maneuvering. Right, which is what Evans is looking for. And Dan's giving him, you know, we're hey, seeing here a range and a half on every rock. Yep. If Dan was sticking them all together, <coughs> they'd be... You know, a place where he could hide. Well, what do you think, Chet? Um, any of you experienced Dash players? I'm not. Well, I think that if we see three arcs on Dash at any point during this game, Evan's going to get a leg up from there on out. Like If he gets half points on Dash and scares Poe, right? Poe can, can, can remove Whisper's target lock, but if Whisper hunts oh, Dash, yeah. if Whisper stays in that range one bubble, if... if Evan can trade Whisper for Dash, I think he's in a good position, right? If he can keep those Zetas chasing Poe, yeah. if he can use the, that multi-action and rear shots to his ability, right? If he can get them in and just make it a no-go zone for, for Dash, right? And Dan's a, a huge Wookiee Liberator, Ozaduck player, and Ghost player. He likes his tanks. He likes his tanks. Doe's, uh, not Doe, Dash is, uh, I, so I, I <laughs> smashed together like Dash and Poe, but Dash is not a huge tank. And here you can see, right, Evan setting up all of his ships to hunt Dash. And that's certainly, we've got Christian here in chat saying that Evan has to kill Dash I think before so Whisper as well. goes down. I, I think that, uh, I think he's he got to at least, Whisper. I think, I think he he's got to at least Whisper trade them. Dash. That's... That might be acceptable, and that might be the best he can do. Right. But uh, that's not good. Christian, a lo another great local player, flies a lot of swarms. We saw him out mm -hmm. at. Uh, he was commentating on the last, on the last top four game we saw, yes. uh, and it's uh, it was a chat favorite. Hopefully, we'll have him out again. And uh, this is a really hopefully we've got Evan here playing with my painted dials. So we've got Dan playing with uh, the painted dials he won in the last season for donating money to the league if you donate money to the oh, league yeah. you end up with uh, in a in a draw for painted dials or painted ships which is something we do fairly often so dan showing off his painted dials there from uh, that he won in the uh, season nine mm -hmm. for uh for donating money to the ptl so oh, he's got a nice paint job on his dash as well he does and it matches his dial someone painted his dash up as a blue squadron because nice. he likes flying those blue squadrons he likes those a wings he likes his ghost he likes Harris and Dula from Rebels. So so we got a lunge from one of the Zetas. That is number two. That is the guy with advanced optics. Now, that covers a lot of them. If you if you sit there and think about it, imagine where range three is going to be on those Zeta squadrons. Think about where Whisper can go. There is nowhere on that third of the map that Whisper can go and not be in one arc right now. Watch the table, dude. Right? I'm playing table piano again. So... Dan has to, had to do that match, right? Hmm. Well, we've got people looking for Christian's opinion in chat. Now, Christian <laughs> is in chat, so look for Moose Green. Moose Green is Christian, and he will certainly give you 
uh, an answer if you ask he him. He has many opinions. Okay, and we've so got, got a, Whisper Cloak. We've got Whisper Cloak. Now, Whisper, if you think about it into the next turn, can only decloak forwards based on her positioning. So Evan here uh, must feel that his list is precarious versus this one, and that would be an understatement. So he's going for a fast engagement. Evan has to go for a fast engagement, right? Dash has Ray. The sooner you engage Ray, the better. Now, oh, yeah. when I faced John Hahn in my Season 8 final, mm -hmm. or Season 8 Top 4, I brought In Your Face Amount of Space, which we just saw earlier. Yes. Right? Because I was in a, able to engage Dash on Round 2 with one focus, or two mm -hmm. focuses. And right? hurt you, him. And you, and you blind him, and you damage cockpit him, and you push him, and you hurt him, yeah. and you and you have to engage Ray as soon as possible so they don't bank those three or four or five focuses. Absolutely. Pushing into the, into the late game, that's a, that's a bank that they can really get into. It makes it very difficult for you to, uh, to, to really hunt those Wow, Evan those is dashes. just going straight in. He absolutely has to. Evan needs to force an engagement here. Uh, that's interesting. That's a good call, though. Dan should not be taking those measurements, although uh, Evan is target no, he, locking, he, he, so yeah. he's so checking for Evan. My Zeta apologies. Number two, target locking dash. Now, that's an interesting decision because he's got advanced optics. He's checking for his target lock, even though he's advanced sensors. Now, dash advanced does optics, have my apologies. Uh, burnout slam. Dash doing the four forward cannot slam or could slam, but has to four forward again. Yes. Trying to get out of Evan's trap there because Evan was able to set up something, right, to... Uh, here we go. Some discussion on the table. Oh, oh letting okay. him decloak. Decloak was skipped. Again, flat casual, folks. Even in the final, you know, uh, it's it's tough to say it really matters. Evan only really had one decision, so we sort of knew all all knew where he was going. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see now where his whisper goes. Whether it's going to be a three bank or a, a three hard or a four forward. I mean, that's it certainly might be a possible. Four forward. No, nah, that's not great. No, right. that's not great. A three bank, I think, would be his ideal positioning, but we may see a hard one or a hard three, too. So Dan may be hesitating here on whether or not to use that burnout slam. Do we know where Callus has gone? Uh, I don't think we know the Callus. Um, certainly, if you if you give me a second, I'll go and I can make sure that there's a, a condition token. Out. Okay, grab a condition, Aaron. Grab a condition token out of my uh, out of my kit. So certainly, we're gonna. Uh, Whisper is now decloaked. We're going to see whether or not uh, we get a burnout slam, what action is going to come on Dash Randar. Uh, again, he does have smog smuggling compartment and burnout slam, which does give him access to the slam maneuver at least once during the game. Uh, he also has countermeasures and uh, ray. So, yeah, we've got burnout slam. So now since, since he did a four forward, he must do a four forward, as that is the only four maneuver in the game the uh the four bank is available on uh in a different game in star trek attack wing but not in x-wing there's the three bank i predicted out of evan watching him bend over look getting that uh that that beautiful chiseled face into the screen there we go a cloak again now that gives Aaron, uh, evan a lot of options there with with whisper whether you can decloak left or right or forwards this this round that's great from him. Poe doing a very conservative move, coming up the side of the board. Evans, in the fact that he's done the four forward, four forward with both of his Zeta, Zeta specialists, he's got them in a really rough position in that they can't hard two to come back around in the next in next turn. So I'm waiting for Aaron to get back, find out where uh, Callus is. Callus is on dash, it turns out, which uh, was predicted, I think, by Christian in chat. Uh, and we've got uh, here a boost from Poe. So Poe can do a hard maneuver, come back in, engage those Zeta specialists while they have to get around that rock. That's a really rough position. Whereas Whisper could decloak backwards, three bank forwards, and get like a, a far range three shot out on Poe. But I don't know if that's going to be worthwhile for Evan. Yeah, that's a tough call. Uh, if uh, Whisper goes forward to pursue Dash, she'll have both Dash and possibly Poe turning back into her. And those uh, Zetas don't have anywhere great to go in that scenario. Maybe uh, Evan is best off doing sloops with the Zetas and just getting them out and playing for time. I think so. I think that might that might not be a bad decision. Three three K turns from all of them, or sloops, I suppose, is what sloops, the uh, the yeah. Zetas have. Now, I wonder if this is the right maneuver. 
Dan's bailing with Dash, bringing Poe in, engaging with Poe. That means Evan can get all of his ships. Poe's going to shoot first, do not a lot of damage to one of Evan's ships. Evan's going to be able to hopefully shoot all of his ships at Poe. Again, Poe painted up by one of the, the game school regulars. He's lovely. Now, you know, three arcs on Poe. Poe won't give half damage, but if Poe goes down and it's two ships or one ship versus Dash, Whisper can hunt Dash. That would be amazing. Right? However, the problem and is that's, and they, those Zetas if, can't get on get on Poe as a target, not with their front arcs. But if but if uh, Dan hard two, hard threes in around that rock, right? I mean, that's what's going to be happening. He's going to be engaging with with Poe over Dash. He's going to be doing a, you know, he's going to be sitting in that corner. He's going to be coming around hard. He's going to be out of out of action next round, right? So it's going to be very interesting. Evan already made a decision with one of his tie with one of his tie fighters, two of his uh, special forces tie fighters, right? Still, mm -hmm. still waiting on, uh, and 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 Dan made a decision made a decision with Poe. Both of those, all three of those ships are set, so that's gonna be very interesting to see. That was an easy decision for both players. Dash going down, Whisper. Evan's still deciding, right? Yeah. Well, there's no way Whisper can get a range one on Dash here. Now there is a question in chat where Christian is. Christian's in the Twitch chat, so we, lucky, lucky us here yeah. sitting in the in the chat booth, can see both YouTube and Twitch chat at the same time in the same place. However, if you're on YouTube or you're on Twitch, you're not going to be able to see the other one. So, so we may be replying to people you can't see. Absolutely. Sorry. So also, if you're looking to talk to Christian, Christian's in the Twitch chat. So if you want his attention, you go there and look for a moose green. That's uh, that's Christian. Our so, local uh, swarm aficionado? master yeah. aficionado, absolutely. I try, but I can't come to Christian's, you know, absolute beauty of the uh, of his maneuvering. Well, the swarm's seen better days, unfortunately. Luckily, uh, the FFG devs don't give a shit, and then the swarms will never be back. It's oh, great. We may see them. We may see them. Well, they said they don't care at least twice now. So it's great. That's not what they said. That's exactly what they said. That's not what they said. It's already dead, so who cares if harpoon missiles are OP? We'll see. We'll see. We'll All see, right. says so what, the blind what, man. What does Dash do? Dash, I think, is doing a hard three here and then boosts to come around. Uh, or or a hard three focus and just banks it in Ray. Yep. Now, because he hasn't banked anything on Ray yet, we can see Ray up there in the corner. There's nothing there yet. No, he just did the burnout slam, didn't he? He burnout slammed. So Dash with Lone Wolf, right? Mm -hmm. It's that reroll, very tanky dash, but it's very hard for him to compete with Whisper, who can get into that bubble. Whisper on dash would be very likely. That's Evan's, Evan's game. dream end game. If he can get, I would say, if he could trade both of those Zetas for Poe, he's going to be happy. And, yeah. and Whisper can hunt game, dash to his but, content. Uh, it is in Whisper's favor. Absolutely, because Whisper doesn't care. He's going to barrel roll. He's going to push damage through on Poe, right? And uh, it's gonna it's gonna make him cloak. It's gonna give him a focus, and then he's gonna be pretty much undam undamageable on uh, on defense. So, especially with Callus being able to turn that focus to evade. That he's got Callus on dash is huge. Yeah, we got a question in chat. Is this the most prestigious event in X-wing? I would say yes. <laughs> the PTL is probably the the largest and greatest community in X-wing. I'm gonna toot our own horn. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a pretty prestigious event in casual X-Wing for sure. So uh, do you want to go over some of the rules and some of the loops that these players have had to get through to get to this position? Uh, so in the Prototype Toronto League, they yeah, play absolutely. seven weeks, in, seven games in seven weeks uh, in the regular season, and they may not repeat a named pilot or an exact list loadout, so they have saved these pilots till the very end so that they could play them. Absolutely. And, uh, so Evan has gotten to the finals without playing Whisper. Dan has gone to the finals without playing Poe and Dash. Indeed. Yeah. And you can repeat generics as needed for the most part. For the most part. Um, okay. They seem almost ready here. We got Evan looking at that. So we're remembering the D cloak this time. So better than our top eight match with uh, with uh, Tony and and uh, she's decloaking forward. Tim. So here we go. A decloak forward. Not quite what I expected. I was expecting a decloak left. So try and get as many guns on Poe as possible. Certainly interesting. And we have a bank three. So Evan is pursuing. Absolutely. That's a great position for him to get into the next round. He can hard one, hard two, hard three around that corner. Right? Get in there and brawl with uh, with Poe in the next round. 
Uh, you know, keep in mind that one turns and three turns on the SF are red. Absolutely. But with FCS, advanced optics, lightweight frame, some of these things, he's not quite too worried about that. You know, you can do a hard two from number three, a hard one from number two, and certainly get a solid engagement off. And Let's see. I what is Dan is doing? I suggested a hard three. We've got hard a hard two. two. That's good. He's uh, He'll keep in range probably of number three. We'll have to see if he goes for a target lock this round. I suspect he'll go for the focus. Oh, yeah. Now, this is interesting from Whisper. Those two SFs have blocked the majority of her maneuvers. So it'll be interesting to see where she goes. And we may see a four forward here slamming in to, like, get a... Oh, there we see a target lock on number three. Dan being very aggressive with Poe. Indeed. Although he may get... There we go. There's the four forward from Whisper that I predicted. And we will see a shot from Poe on Whisp on from Whisper on Dash this round. Is that an arc that is... Or in range that is in range? Here's to be... So the question is, is will Whisper be in range? She certainly ha looks like she's got the angle for arc. Depends on how... Uh, I don't think she does. I think he's going to have to cloak. Well, we'll, tr we'll I'm, see. I imagine he'll try for a target lock. Or just try and eyeball it. This isn't exactly Vassal. It's tough to tell on the table. Evan, as we've sp spoken uh, about before, a mean Vassal player. Absolutely great. So... You think that's out of arc. I think it's in arc. <coughs> Evan's got to make a decision. Uh, Before Poe moves, some action, right? he's going to have to take an action. He's got, okay, he's, he's got a token. He's got a hand. focus in his hand. Focus. He's going for the focus. All right, folks. Can't target lock. I forgot that uh, no, the Phantoms can't. do not have that target lock action. A hard three here from Poe. I, su I suspect the hard two. Dan well, being careful three, around the rock. Followed by a boost will get Dash out of uh, get Poe. Po. Uh, sorry, yeah, Poe out of Dash's range two. Yeah, absolutely. And that's amazing. Gets in there. Yeah. Now, I'm not sure both of these SFs will be able to hard one, block up Poe, really do some damage in the next turn. Whisper can can cloak if he's able to shoot dash, do a hard one. Can Candy came backwards, right? That's going to be a bit of pretty crazy can move, maneuver. Going to be able to get all guns on Poe, right? Dash, I don't know if... Now, Dash, Dan clearly is going for number three in this scenario. But with oh, six, I think he's going to shoot Whisper with both ships if he has range. I mean, he's target locked Dash onto number three. So he's contemplating, well, his action here, I suppose, was boost from Poe. Oh, po. you're right. He has no focuses. So, uh, well, he's got advanced optics on, on Poe. So we're seeing a shot from Poe onto Whisper. Oh, that's rough. He's going to poke us. He's going to poke us for two. And so Evan's going to Evan's gonna take one. one. Uh, so that's... Uh, mm -hmm. A one shield on Whisper. Now we're going to see if Whisper's got uh, got dash and arc, Indeed. and so that's going to be certainly something that will really define. Just about him. everything in this round hangs Abs on it. Absolutely, I Looks think he's like got he He's got oh, him. He's look got at range. Yep. He's got range three. Okay. So. No out of range. Out of range. That's not great. No, it's really bad news for Evan, unfortunately. So that means he can't cloak this round. He He's not going to be able to candy cane like I was suggesting. And Dash is going to put Hurt into number three. Uh, what have we got? Two hits and a focus. No, no focus. No he focus. does have a target lock. He's going to lone wolf this. Right. Which is why you don't take target locks with lone wolf Dash. Three. So now we've got three. And, and two, two evades. evades. So one shield on number three. So Evan rolling his lightweight frame with his evade dice. That's pretty fine. Yeah. Number three takes one. That's pretty good, too. Now, maybe a hard one for all of them. Poe can't go left. That's not a great roll, no matter what it is. One crit. I guess that's number three, shooting at Dash. He acquires his target lock. And Dash rolling three dice. Ah, he's fine. He's fine. <laughs> Dan fighting it out for game school. Doing great here. Indeed. You know, fighting his way to the top. And uh, he's gone over some really great PTO legends. He's gone over Eric Z, mm -hmm. EZ, as he's known, uh, and uh, Kelvin Lau, uh, an incredible Aces pilot. So it's uh, he's, he's certainly earned his way to the top here. And uh, Evan immediately deciding. He knows exactly where number three is going. He knows exactly where, where Whisper's going. He knows exactly where number two is going. Dan's got to make some decisions here. And I think... 
it's very easy easy for Evan to say, I want to go into X, Y, and Z position. I'm I'm assuming with the amount of tokens that number three and number two have banked, we may see hard two barrel rolls backwards to sort of trap Poe. And uh, that a, seems a, like a good plan. A hard one from Whisper, but I don't know where Dash is going. Maybe a three bank, maybe a a, a one forward, sort of like. You know, slow roll there, sort of maybe bank a token, sort of start working on uh, deleting number three. But Poe's in a really rough place, and I'm not sure where I'd put him. You know, a one bank's a one bank isn't safe from a hard two barrel roll bump. No, it isn't. Uh, maybe a bank two for for Poe. So sort of try and disengage, just get out of there. Now the green yeah, take the, a bump if you have to, and take four, a shot from one of them. Well, there you go. A bump means that that Whisper ship's doesn't not get to cloak yet. until she shoots, if she even has a target. So a range one so on Whisper. range one on Whisper is devastatingly good. Especially with those two of eight dice, right? Now, I've got a question in chat, Aaron. Someone's thinking about a crack shot, three crack shot defenders or two Kiko Milas. Now, I think three crack, de three crack shot defenders with X7 with those of eights. If you can fly that fairly simply, you can avoid bumping, you can avoid those rocks. You know, if you're in the top 75% of players and you're not going to fly over rocks every game, I think uh, that's going to be a pretty solid choice at the regionals. It may not take it's you to the top tables. It's pretty tanky. It'll um, get you up there. If it's something you enjoy, go for it. Watch out for arc dodging big ships. Arc dodging big ships are going to be rough, but you could throw, like, Mer instead of Vessery, you could throw in a Merrick with VI or a, a Rexler with VI and get some solid use out of those ships. Get them up to PS9, something like that, and then uh, get some barrel rolls in. So John Wilder asks, where does the Talon roll put Bo? Um, it's hard to tell from the angle. That's a very good question. I think bumping into a hard one whisper. I don't think, if I was Evan, I wouldn't hard one. I think I'd do a hard three and then barrel roll and try to use Whisper to, in fact, block Poe. Now, if he three banks or he four forwards, he's still going to get those back arcs out of those Zetas. Yep. Right? So in chat, the same player who asked us the question about Kigamilas or defenders, if you're good with defenders, fly something. You're, the meta's open. Fly something you're good with and be aggressive. Be uh, aggressive. Be, be aggressive. There's the two bank. And here comes the barrel roll, perhaps. Let's see, Evan's making a de He's thinking, he's making a decision. Whether he wants to be aggressive or not, whether he wants to push that target lock onto... Oh, he's he's uh, he's focused, it appears. Okay. And another too hard there from this, S S this SF. And uh, I wonder, again, he's got a focus, he's got a target lock. I'm wondering if we're gonna see that barrel roll here get that block off but if he gets the block off now with number two instead of number three number three is not gonna be able to shoot him shoot po yeah correct i think that the whole plan here is just to get whisper out of the danger zone so i, I don't think whisper's in a danger zone i think whispers i think i think uh evan's a good enough player that he knows he needs to hunt dash with whisper and he's gonna be able to three bank barrel roll he's gonna be a hard three get arc on on dash and and he's, he's thinking about moving his target lock there with number two. Well, we're going to see what Dash does here. Um, I think this, the one straight is the right call, as you mentioned before, but he's done a three bank. And I'm thinking he's maybe going to get three shots on Dash right now. Like, this is what I said. If, if Evan gets three arcs on Dash, he is going to be a happy man. Well, especially because Dash does not have a big reserve of Ray tokens. He's got no ray tokens right now, no, no, right. and the we're barrel seeing, roll back is and we're seeing a barrel roll to three. Absolutely. Now we have a question uh, uh, in chat: whether one should worship Unkar Plut or Gonk, and I feel like the answer is Gonk, 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 Gonk. Even though Unkar Plut is our Lord and Savior. Uh, well, here comes the whisper move. And three bank, three, three hard. There we go. That's all right. The hard one being blocked by. Uh, by SF2 there. No, I think he has to evade here. Uh, I would say barrel roll. There's very little ways that Poe can get a shot on him. If he banks one or two turns towards in, then he'll have a range one and whisper with a focus. This is the danger of this position. Is that dangerous? Oh yeah, range one shot, only two green dice. Well, I, I think that you're you're not wrong. So, but that's banking on a, a one bank here from Poe. You think that's what's uh, Hard plugged two in? Hard two will do it. Or actually a three turn. Yeah. Now, uh, a barrel roll would certainly get him out of arc. Man, 
man, this is rough. I see. This is certainly a very rough. The burnout position. slam really served uh, Dan well here. It did. It definitely got him out of the trap that Evan set up for him. And now, allowed the engagement to happen on his terms. Now, because number two, SF, he's out of arc from Dash. Good call from Evan to move that target lock. Right? And this is a very tough decision for Evan right now. And he's taking some time. Yeah. And, they've and got that, two hours. So that's just fine. They've got two hours for the final. They've spent 20 already. And this is certainly the time to spend, take a little bit longer, make that decision. Jeff Pickles called this in, in chat that uh, maybe a barrel will be the right call. Someone else said that uh, an evade would be the right call. And certainly he's, uh, maybe you said that evade was the right call. And that's certainly what he's done right now. And Poe disengaging. That's I don't, fantastic news for Evan. Now he might, and it looks like he's out of arcs of both the SFs. I, he may have just fed Dash to the Wolves now, but that may not be the worst thing. No, I mean, at most it's gonna be two ships in range of Dash. We don't know for sure that Whisper is. It looks like it is, but you can never really tell when you're looking at a screen. That's, that's certainly that's certainly true. So uh, Dash, oh, Poe is target locked Whisper. Poe po target locking Whisper, looking, seeing to come back around. Dash does have a focus on his ray to feed himself. Whisper is in now, range where did, of Dash. Does he? Okay. So range three, Whisper on Dash. Obstructed, of course. Big rock in the way. She this just be wants to get to the target lock here. But, but she, throws, she throws big damage using Callus. Two Actually, hits she, and a crit. Yeah. And two and natural evades. Two natties. He's lone got lone wolf. wolf. Likelihood is he's got this, but are you going to spend the focus? No, no matter what, Evan gets the fire control system. Mm -hmm. And Dan does not spend it and takes a damage. So, so now Whisper he's, gets a focus, a fire control system, and a cloak. Absolutely. So he's got focus, evade, and cloak. So he's going to be rolling five, four dice because he's got the HLC that counts as a secondary weapon. And it's uh, O P A F, and uh, O P A F, as fuck. All right. There we go. That's our our one swear for. O P. Uh, it was run together, so I was like, O P A F. What's that? O P A F. So Dash is gonna shoot here. It looks like he's shooting at number three. I don't know. We'll see. And it's a big Ooh. dash roll. Don't forget to turn your crit into a hit. Uh, crit it's on in, the first roll. Crit into hit, boys. Yeah, Evan's got it. Yep. We got uh, focus. For four hits. Blank out. That's rough. So it's four damage all told. Now I think that's on number three, uh, Aaron, not on Whisper. Yeah, no, it's obviously not on Whisper. That's not enough dice. Absolutely. Now, Evan, using both PTL and Gold Squadron target locks, very nice to see. Stylish. So the question is, number three is now still alive with focus target lock. Number two, does he have arc? Spending the focus, Looks hit, like hit, does. crit. It's three. That's number two. That's not great for Dash. Will uh, Dan remember Lone Wolf? There's Lone Wolf. Great to see. Oh, man, that's rough. He just uh, he two takes damage two damage. There. So three damage total so far on Dash. That's most of his shields, Aaron. Now we've got number three coming. Yep. And he's got a lock. Oh, he and, and he doesn't need it. Reacquires that target lock with, with FCS. Lone Wolf here from Dash. Dash takes another two. He's, that he's, is Dash's shields down. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Devin, uh, Evan has traded most of his Zeta Specialists to get here, and one shield on Whisper. Mm -hmm. That last one may be more significant in the long run. But again, we were talking how Whisper versus Poe was Dan's ideal endgame, right? You mean Evan's? Evan's. No, Dan's ideal endgame. He's got oh, black oh, one. Yeah, yeah. He can strip that target lock. He's pilot skill 11. He's over the nine on whisper. He can he can boost to get out of arc. He can strip that target lock. And this, you know, this like new this Poe is, even out points whisper. And he does. He's 43 points over 41. So I think that it's not the end of the world for Dan if if he trades Dash for a couple of Zetas. Like, I don't think that's, that's a bad trade for him. He's certainly going to have to figure out. I'm uh, suspecting two banks, three banks, or one banks. Certainly a maneuver to sort of get Dash in arc again uh, with those Zetas is what's going to happen. The fact of the matter is Dash can get away in this round if he wants to. I don't think he can. Four straight barrel roll back. Four straight barrel roll back. If if Evan does three banks from with both of his ships, I think it's still an arc. Uh, he might just have range, but it's going to be range three through a rock. 
So I'm su- I'm suspecting two Plus, banks. Plus, will get away from Whisper. I'm suspecting two banks from the from the SFs, and mm-hmm. that way he can barrel roll around that rock, to keep arc on, uh, keep arc on dash. He's got target locks from both of his ships, so not having the focus is not the end of the world. He did have to spend it from both of his ships. Um, you know, I'm. You know, he could have had advanced optics on one and uh, fire control system on the other, and then he could have traded out their their productivity, mm-hmm. right? In this case, he said to spend the focus from the one with advanced optics. He does have fire control system on it. He could have re-rolled that die for a 50% chance of getting a hit and saved that focus going into the next round, but he decided not to. And that's on number two in the rear there. So, yeah, number two be is interesting. Full health. Now, it's important that number two is so healthy because uh, one thing Evan can do here is he can use him to threaten Poe coming back around. And that's absolutely that's pretty important. Um, If he can get Poe's shields, he can make Poe worry. Yeah. I mean, Poe, Dash has no shields. Poe doesn't have, uh, Poe does have regen. He's got R2-D2. Of course he does, yeah. So we got a decloaking whisper. And she's decloaking to the right, and I suspect as we'll far see, forward as she can go. I suspect we'll see a candy cane here from uh, Evan, but maybe a three bank or or a hard two. But still, it'll certainly be interesting. Yeah, he's not got the room for a hard three for Whisper. Now he's switched up his dials. That's all right. And there's right. there's, there's, the, three there's bank. the banks. You know, he's got to close that distance. There's very limited options as to what Dash can do forwards. If he does do that four forwards, great. You but know, it forces he, a barrel roll, he's which got, is nice for Evan. Exactly, and he's got the rocks between him. Evan can still do that hard one, especially with his ships with advanced sensors. He's not really worried about that. He can focus now. Wow, these, he, these Zetas are just all in on Dash. If he does not, and, and that's what he's got to do, right? He has to get that. Now we we're, he's forcing, right, because Dash doesn't have boost. If Dash had boost, he'd be out of all those arcs. Now he's got a barrel roll backwards. He spent that ray focus. He's got to push it to three, and he's only got that lone wolf free roll. If Evan can guarantee those three hits from each ship, if he can he's get pushing one dam- crit through. He, if he can guarantee a crit through from each ship, that's Dash hanging crits. And you know, maybe he maybe hard turns are red. Maybe he's got a stress. Maybe he's pilot skill zero. All of those crits are bad Happiness news bears. For, for all they're, they're all bad news bears. So, do you focus here with Dash and try to mitigate some of the incoming damage, or do you barrel roll? As I, I would barrel roll to get to range three, especially with Lone Wolf. Lone Wolf really helps. Well, I guess he knows what Poe is doing. You get you get three dice with a reroll instead of two dice with a reroll. You know, it's, it's more likely you're going to get that blank Lone Wolf, as some people do or do not know. He's focusing. He, I mean, I don't think that's the right decision. You cannot reroll a blank with Lone Wolf. Now, Evan may know that, and Dan may not. That's certainly something I run into a lot with uh, some of the newer players. We've got a three bank here with with Whisper. I don't think Whisper's in range. I agree. And she can't boost? Nope. Uh, but it's not a horrible ba- uh, position for... I, I imagine we'll see him cloak, and there okay. he cloaks. There we go. Yeah. And what did Poe do? Talon roll? I suspected a Talon roll. There we go. And coming on the side, he's going to do it as far forward as possible. He's maybe got a range three on that number two Zeta squadron. Yep. And that'll be a range three probably on the Zeta squadron. And maybe, maybe Dan can get two shots on the number two, but number two's not the hurt one. No, he needs to shoot down number three. So then he's shooting Poe at number two, Dash at number three, he number three on with, number three with, on with one hall. On number three, number three is on one hall. It may disappear, but we'll see a number. Oh yeah, a, a Dash hard, is gonna kill it. We'll see a hard one next turn from Zeta Squadron. Absolutely. He'd need uh, Evan would need a miracle for number three to survive just Dash's heavy laser cannon. Well, let's see if po, who Poe is in range of. It's like Poe's in range of number three. He's going to shoot at number three. Oh, oh he's shooting at number two. Number two. Point, he pointed at number two. Let's see uh, who they take off at the end of this round. Three dice there from Dan. That's what Poe wants to see. One hit, two hits with a focus. Yep. And Spend the focus to live, Evan. That's what we no, want. No, it's see. number two, so we might say. Shooting at number two, he takes yeah. one. One damage to number two. With advanced optics, that's the right choice there. Taking a shield, coming in, being able to save it if he can, trying to put damage on Dash. Dash is going to shoot number three. Only a miracle saves number three here. Yep. That I mean, that's, that's three. He's got a target lock. He re-rolls it. He's also got low wolf. He can re-roll it. Lots of re-rolls there. Four hits. Three's gone. 
three is gone. Evan rolls natties, but... So, kills him with one damage. Brutal. Darkest timeline for number three. Dan did all, uh, Evan did all and he could. And unfortunately, it didn't Dan burn. Dan did all he could. Didn't burn Dash's focus token. So we have a range two. It appears it might be unobstructed. So we've got our uh, table judge, who we've not given a shout out to yet. We've got Aaron Dater on the table. Went 6 0 with uh, Nim Miranda at the Toronto Regionals. Ended in the top four. And uh, we've got. He's going to tell us whether it's going to be obstructed or not. Mm hmm. I guess we'll see in a moment. Three dice here Three. from Evan. He's got fire control system. Into Rerolls blank. into a blank. Unfortunate. 50% chance of that. And, and most likely Dash is just going to. Dash evade cannot the whole reroll. Thing. He will spend the, eva the focus. So da uh, Ray does not have any focus, as I imagine, at this point. And so Evan did not have to spend his focus, leaving him open to the hard one next turn and being fully tokened. Yeah, you're right. The hard one could work here. You could also plunge through the rock, try to get uh, surprise dash by getting into his range one. He does not need actions in this round. Now we might be able to see a, a, a decloak forward from Whisper, followed by a three bank, trying to get in on dash, take him off the board. I think Evan really expected to get another damage or two through this round, and it did not happen. Yeah, well, between the fragility of Zeta Specialist 3 and uh, that unfortunate roll with the attack dice on Zeta Specialist 2. Which would I have mean, it's always frustrating when you got a target lock and you get two and you re-roll the other one and you get another blank. And it would Shake your dice, people. Shake un unobstructed. That's what they're for. You know, it would have been a crit if it had gone through. You know, that would have been... Any crit is really debilitating at this point in the game, right? The first damage you take on Hull, it's a crit. It really affects how you fly. And uh, we'll really have to see how Evan does uh, in the following rounds. All right. So what would you do if you're Poe here? I would probably just do a, a one forward green or a two forward green and uh, just hope to kill number two with Dash in the next round. Dash can hard one barrel roll backwards or he can three bank away and sort of still get a shot off. And uh, I'd certainly bait that Zeta into the middle of the board and, uh, and set it up to kill it. Yeah, I mean, uh, Pickles is also recommending a one hard for Dash, right? Yeah. And a barrel now, roll. Dash, but if Whisper gets Dash up in no there... Dash no longer has a target lock. Dash no longer has a, a banked focus. You know, he's going to have to start recharging some of these things to prevent damage onto Hull because he's given away half points on Dash already. He's given away 29 points on Dash. True. How much are the Zeta Specialists worth? 27. 20. 27. Oh, so, okay. so Evan is actually up on points right now. Yeah, it may be, Mark Anderson, that uh, Dash has forgotten his countermeasures. Well, or he's saving it for the turn when Whisper has a shot. Good point, good point. Right? You know, you, you're going to want to push that off on when you've got a range one five die hit. Oh, whoops. Countermeasures beginning of the, of the round. No more target lock, and then uh, there it goes. Right? So if I were Poe, I think I might four straight. Hunt really? Whisper. You'd sort of just, like, get in there? Get behind Whisper. Then Evan's game is on the rocks. Now I I would suspect that Whisper's going super fast this round and like a four straight might get Whisper out of arc, might get her behind Poe. We got the decloak forward. I suspect we'll see a three bank. You Not know, sure. Like three a, bank fits. Maybe, maybe, maybe. For sure, a three bank fits. Yep. There you go. Like you called Zeta Leader over the rock. At least one of us has been right every round <laughs> in terms of calling. Uh, to, I mean, he's just trying to force I dash feel like the barrel roll. The both of us together are perhaps the equivalent of Evan. He's <laughs> a very good player. Both of these players. Now, we were both in the finals together two seasons ago, season eight. That was season nine. Season nine. Last season. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so two bank two from. Two bank. That now, I suspected a three, right? Going a little faster, going a little harder. That, that Zeta looks like it is at range two now. I'd probably focus with Dash. He's got his lone wolf. Depends on where he's putting Poe. And if he you remembers know. his countermeasures, he can strip Whisper's target lock, making it a not very it's likely trying shot. for target lock on on. That's on always Whisper. a great advantage, or it was a great advantage with Whisper, because you come from so far away, yeah. people often don't get the uh, opportunity to target lock. Now he's going to do barrel roll. A barrel I don't roll. think that's a great move. I, I, yeah, I, I'm with you, Aaron. I don't really agree with then that. Then again, he might be calculating, and it might just put him out of Whisper's range. You know, with Lone Wolf, he's got all those re-rolls. He's going from two dice with a re-roll to three dice with a re-roll. Well, we'll giving him a better doing. chance to get those on there. Might get him out of Whisper's arc. 
Might get him out of range three from Whisper. I think she's still got range. I think she's out. We're, we're, we'll, we'll bet a penny on it. All right. That's what Timbo Two Slice bucks. likes to do. There we go. We got we got Timbo Slice in chat there on Twitch. Uh, Tim, I just bet Aaron a penny uh, that that Whisper was out. He thinks Whisper's in. I want Tim's opinion in chat. We're going to see that soon. All right. Let's see what Timbo Slice thinks. It's a one and, straight. And we've got a one straight. Two so there we go. You were right once this round. I was right one, once this round. He's got a nice range two shot there on the Zeta Specialist. Or you can bank in, do that little boost. That's what we're looking for for that range one shot. He's got that pocus. And uh, Tim's saying, you don't have a penny to give me. I think that's an answer. Uh, I, I have, no, actually, I don't. Nobody carries pennies anymore. No, the pennies are no longer legal yeah, tender in I'll, Canada. I'll give you a nickel. You got me a nickel. Well, I, if I, you're right. Now, uh, Dash leaving his uh, his Star Lord target lock behind. There we go. Dan catching up. That's yeah, a I nice think shooting the Zeta specialist. That's the a right solid here, choice there. Uh, that little boost in. The temptation to sh to shoot Whisper is going to be huge. We've got some people in chat saying Whisper's in. Whisper getting you can three evade dice with a focus there. Uh, he's got his target lock on Whisper, so it's going to be pretty solid. Oh, he's yeah, yeah he's, shooting he's, the Zeta. he's shooting the Zeta. I mean, it's he's right he's going to push damage through. I mean, that's that's the safe shot. There we go. Oh, and when you roll like that, three. Dan, three. Zeta taking one. Evan spending the focus. So, no, no. and that's good. Zeta leader down to one shield. Now, Dash has no target locks on anybody. So, Dash, apart from his lone wolf, this is going to be unmodified. He's, he's shooting at Whisper. That's the, right, that's the right call. Let's see if he's in arc. Let's see if he's in range. He's not in arc, but he's, let's see if he's in range. Oh, it's totally the wrong call to shoot at Whisper with no mods but a lone wolf. If she's cloaked. If she's not cloaked, though. Well, if she's shooting, then she's cloaked again. No, but, uh, okay, so Whisper's shooting at Dash. Countermeasures. It's got to be done at the beginning of the round, guys, but we'll let you, we'll let it sure. fly. We fly casual here at the PTL, so we lose uh, Whisper's. Whisper's in. There you go. I owe you a shiny penny or a drink downstairs two after. Bucks. And then some people on the internet owe me money. Yeah. And oh, that's not, blanks. that's not what Evan wants to see. That's not. He can't cloak. He can't do anything. That's, no, 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 that's, no, he cloaks. He, after he shoots, no matter what, he cloaks. He acquires the target lock. He just doesn't get the free focus. He just doesn't get the focus. All right. Oh, man. And Dash is shooting at the Zeta. That is not what Whisper wanted no, to see. No, that was really unfortunate. And that is fortunate. So that's now, three hits. Dan, Dan, are you going to remember your lone wolf? Dan is not going to remember his lone wolf. And Whisper's fine. Whisper's going to spend his... That was the Zeta. Oh, he's shooting at Zeta. Who took one damage. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Again, Dan forgetting his lone wolf. Could have been four there. Could have been two damage. Yeah, it's a range three for Zeta. Zeta at range three. He's got a target lock. Come on, Evan. And there we go. Hit crit. Hit, hit crit. So this Shoot. crit might get through. Three dice. Three dice here from Dan. Is it? I don't know why he's rolling four. Oh, because of uh, countermeasures this round. He remembers lone, lone wolf, wolf now. And he's clean. He gets his two. Yeah. So countermeasures was absolutely huge there. I mean, this was the turn to pop it. I yep. mean, that was, he, he you know. Got a big shot in from Whisper, negated that almost completely, or absolutely completely, and uh, got those extra dice he needed versus that uh, that Zeta squadron. Now is Poe too committed here? Uh, Poe is extremely committed, and it's going to be difficult for Poe to get arcs next round because uh, Whisper's going to decloak forwards, probably three bank again, trying to hunt uh, Dash, and you're going to see Zeta two come in and and again try and brawl with Whisper, probably another three three hard three bank. Sorry. And uh, and barrel roll for a shot or take that focus again. Yeah. So and those three dice with a focus and that target lock, those those Zetas can do a lot of damage. We just need to see that positioning that we're used to from Evan to make it work. I mean, the trouble is here is that Evan's positioning isn't helping him that much. He's just dealing with so much dice he's coming gone, at him at gone, higher PS. He's gone all in on dash and. It's uh, Dan's making him pay for it. It's solid maneuvering here from Dan. But I think, as we said earlier, he had to go in hard on Dash. This no. is working for him in general. Dash is out of shields. He spent his expendables. They're gone. Yeah. He's got nothing on Ray. Dash is in a rough spot. He just needs to keep on him consistently, break through, and kill the guy. Uh, what mean, do you think? Four straight here from the Zeta? Frig, I don't know. Two four bank, straight, maybe? Four straight barrel roll. I'm going to call it two hard or three hard from, from Poe. Yep. A three bank on Whisper. That Zeta, I think it's going to give us a three bank as well. Dash is going to come hard, try and put that rock between him and the two Imperial ships. And uh, I think he might bank three. Uh, 
I don't know. Now, uh, Mr. Ralph's Timbo Slice asking in the chat, is there a world in where the two D cloak left backwards fits? Which way is left? I don't think so, Tim. Behind the, behind the big rock in the middle. Yeah. I don't even know the purpose of that. Tim's been out on the boat all day. I think he's, uh, I think he's got a bit of heat stroke thinking if he wants, if uh, Evan wants to go over that rock. Christian chiming in saying that in no way in hell is Evan going to do that. So it's, uh, it's no, certainly I think the, the, a good the chat. The straight decloak is the move. Yeah. Um, in order to put some speed on to get ahead of Poe, that's that's what he's got to do. Chat's suggesting that Evan switch whisper for Echo mid game. <laughs> bank out and come back around. Solid choice, but that's not allowed. I agree with you. Zero must five 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 five. Uh, three bank from dash. I think yes, yeah, the move. three bank absolutely gets him that distance. Allows him to barrel roll out of arc. Especially gets him. It gets him out of that zeta, right? Tim in chat saying it's not heat strokes. So that means he's uh, you know, tippled AF uh, as the kids <laughs> might say it. He's, he's using emojis to talk to us. I don't know rickety, what that means. Rickety, Tim. rickety, wrecked, I think Tim is, spending all day uh, drinking beer on a boat in Florida. Well, we're we all, said this we're all game jealous. was going to spend your intensity cards, and it oh, is much oh, faster oh, than we thought. It's going to pop your countermeasures. This it's going to exhaust your ray. This is a great match here uh, here today, Aaron. And apparently it's going to kill your Zeta specialist. Something quick. Something quick. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I, I lent Evan one of the Zeta specialists, but... Uh, uh, we'll have to. I don't. I, I'm the gonna claim. One? I'm gonna claim it's the live one. That's yeah. that's uh, that's that's mine. I think Zeta. Yeah, it's unfortunate that he's got Zetas here and not something that could boost. If he had something that would two ships that could boost. This would be a different game. Absolutely. I mean, uh, Whisper's got a, a two forward boost, but that's that's before before everyone else moves. It's a little tough now that they've nerfed it. But uh, I th I think Zeta's got a lot of options. I think we're gonna see. Uh, we have to see damage on dash this round. We've got to see Evan keep two arcs on dash and dash eat eat it this round. And the thing is, dash will always have that, well, most likely will have that lone wolf mod. And there's just not much Whisper can do against that unless she gets good dice. It's the two D cloak forwards. Did he forget to get his target lock last time? No, he's got it. He's got it. He's got that gold, those, those gross gold squadron ones that look terrible. They're so gaudy. <laughs> I like them. Now, there, you were right. Four forward, not the three bank. And uh, I just, if you look at where that far angle gets him, I just think that Dash is going to be able to barrel roll out of that arc. Yeah, and I think three bank plus barrel roll. I think it's is, really is tough. But we will uh, see. Yeah, there's the three bank. Yeah. He's already over the range one bubble. So now, he could just now focus and stay there. He could. Now, the barrel roll probably puts him on a rock here. I thought it, the three bank would get him a little further. So he may be stuck in this position, uh, but a focus isn't bad for him right now. It's just it's, a three-hull Zeta leader. Uh, Zeta I, think, I mean, Zeta's pretty dead. Uh, yeah. He gets to roll three dice with an evade or with a focus. You know, that'll average out to probably two, two and a half evades. So, I mean, he might be okay. He might survive, right? You know, it's got to be five, six damage from dash to sort of delete, ensure well, the deletion of that I'm assuming Zeta both specialist. ships come, in, come, on, come in on him. Absolutely. I'm, I'm expecting a hard two, hard three here Chat, from Chad. Chad is thinking that Whisper may block uh, Poe or try to block. I'm but not really sure how I would see that happening. Um, uh, three turn plus a B roll, but then that a gets hard Whisper one nowhere. from Poe. Right, a hard one from Whisper right now might get in an arc of Poe. If he calls Poe's move, that's great. If he doesn't. And Maybe. if Whisper just does a bank and smacks into a Zeta leader, the back of Zeta leader, that's a terrible po, idea. Po will that's light a terrible her up. idea. I, I mean, Evans, Evans, not not that kind of player. Um, Why well, you don't normally see him uh, make a mistake on that level, uh, especially like bumping Whisper in range two of dash with no mods mm -hmm. for his defense. Um, oh here no! Here we go. There's Dan the barrel roll from back. Dan. Now, this has served him. We did not expect it to do well last time, and it served him well last time. So. It means it's much more about dice. Yeah, he's got to give himself some room to he's, get out of there. He's really leaning on the dice, absolutely, and that's paid off for him so far. And, so you know, far be it from wolf, us to... Uh, Lone Wolf will give him a mod there. So he's rolling three dice plus a mod. Now okay, we've got Whisper. Whisper do? She did a four straight. Four, four straight. So Whisper's probably got him in arc. Yep, looks range, like it. Range three again. Uh, they need to move all their tokens, guys. Come on. Come on, dash in a corner is a bad idea. We've got, uh, uh, no, no, those are, Evan, those are, uh, yeah, 
Figure it out. You got it. They'll take a moment. I think an evade would have served. Oh, interesting. A move. One bank there from Poe. He's got a target lock on Whisper. He'll just boost towards her. Yeah, this is going to be pretty rough. Whisper took that focus, though, so two dice and a focus is not... He's not going to be able to push three dice through. Now, those tar, remember those target locks in that condition token are on Dash. They're not on Whisper. Yep. Whisper's being really greedy, eating, taking all the tokens this round. <laughs> just decked out. Can you get them to move the Dash's tokens to Dash? Sorry, just talking uh, to producer Trav, uh, Victor, running out to uh, make sure we get... Oh, there's the boost we called. That's great. And he's boosting in to go at the Zeta. At the Zeta, you think? There we go. They caught it before we got there. All right, sneaking in. Yeah, but looks like it's zero must. There's not much hope for Zeta. Uh, the Zeta, the chat saying the Zeta leader, uh, Zeta specialist, not Zeta leader, Zeta specialist is dead. Right. He's going to get two shots on him before he shoots. It depends, I think, a lot on Whisper. Well, so. there's no target lock from either of those two rebel ships on Zeta. Now, so some a really bad dice jag now, on Dan's part. Poe has so. a target lock on Whisper, and he's going to be able to shoot him with a target lock and Pocus before Whisper can decloak. I think that that's the shot that Dan needs to make. Whisper on Poe, I mean, Whisper is very maneuverable. Like if, if you can get her in arc and with a shot unmodified while well, she's only got two, Ra looks, looks like, like range, range one. one. I mean, that's the shot you got to take. It looks like it's the shot Stan taking. I mean, that's the right call. I mean, well, Whisper's decloaked. You got to get her. Not what you want to see. Two crits, two blanks. Yep. Spending the target lock. And getting Spending the needs. focus for four. I mean, Evan's got to spend that. Two crits. One shield and one crit to the hull. I mean, so if we'll this, see is this is a direct it. hit, I mean, this game is over, folks. I'm sorry. Damaged engine. That's brutal. Hard turns are red. Oh, man. At least it wasn't damaged co cockpit there, Aaron. At least it wasn't a pilot skill zero. Now, it this may be fortuitous, as bad as it seems. It, it makes may be the next turn very difficult there for Whisper. Whisper is going to shoot at Dash, going to hit, going to cloak. It's range Oop, three. Right. It's range three. Well, we'll see how many uh, dice. Uh, oh, this is why you need the target lock. He's got it this time. And he's got Callus, so he's four three damage. Crit. It's range two. Dash. I think it was range three. Dash takes it all. Well, he can lone wolf that blank. But he's forgotten. Uh, I don't know for sure. They measured. And they... So we got a damaged cockpit on Dash. But pilot skill zero Dash. That's great if Zeta Specialist lives through this round. Did he just do four damage? He just did four damage, Aaron. Whoa. Absolutely. Dash is dead. I think it was four. Dash not shooting. They... Now, blinded, not blinded pilot, but damage cockpit starts the turn after. Now, Aaron, Dater, or Evan should know that. that Dan, maybe. We're looking to see here. Range 2 again. Can't lone wolf a focus. Dash takes another one and dies. Now, Dash should, I believe, have shot first. Did they forget Dash? They did miss Dash. I believe that it's a missed opportunity. Um, Technically speaking. Technically speaking, Dash should have shot first. He may have killed Zeta Specialist. I do I'm not believe. I'm going to find out if that's the issue. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll do it. Uh, Boss Aaron going to check out what's going on there on uh, on the game. Why Dash did not shoot, even though he was pilot skill zero. Pilot skill zero does not proc until the, the next round, folks. So we'll have to see what's going on. Uh... Evan plotting in, I'm assuming, a three sloop on number two. Um, Poe, this is the... I mean, Evan got what he wanted. He killed Dash, but I think Poe's got more MOV than Whisper, and he's got Whisper down to one hull. It's, uh, it's super, super rough. Uh, and we've got a, we had a missed opportunity there with, with uh, Dan passing on on Dash's shot, so we'll have to see uh, what the judges decide on the table. And uh, we've got a crit on Whisper, Whisper on one hull, Zeta Specialist without shields. They've got to put some serious hurt on Poe this round, and uh, Poe just needs to get one damage through on Whisper, and he's shooting before Whisper cloaks. So that's something that's going to be super, super easy for him to do, so um, I can't really... Uh, 
Oh, here we go. Uh, we should get an answer for what's going on soon. It looks, it looks like uh, they're going to resolve the dash shot. Uh, the judges are letting them take that out of uh, or out of order, and so Dash is shooting, I believe, at Whisper. Uh, Lone Wolf there, three hits. Whisper is cloaked for this, and that's not what Evan needs to see. Taking that Dash shot, Evan conceding right there with da with Whisper dead, and uh, you see that handshake, that uh, that PTL courtesy. When the game is over, we recognize the game is over. So they and, rewinded uh, and had Dash do the shot. It blew up Zeta Specialist. It blew up Zeta Specialist or was it killed Whisper? It was Zeta Specialist. Was Oh, no, he, he killed Whisper. He rolled four dice. Did he so roll? He shot, oh. shot a Whisper. So, uh, no, I'm pretty sure it was Zeta Specialist. It killed him and then Evan conceded. Well, one of Evan's ships went down. Evan conceded. Um... And uh, Regen Poe sitting there at the end game. We have uh, our season 10 winner, Dan Vagnall. We do uh, indeed. The taking plot armor right to the end, flying Wookiees and ghosts all the way up to the top. And uh, Rare Blaze is the whole way. And uh, we'll have both of our players on in, uh, in a moment to do a, a little uh, postseason interview. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, it was it was a really difficult match for uh, Evan. Um, a really difficult matchup. Uh, he did a great job chasing there, um, and uh, Dan stayed on him yeah. and, and got the traps he needed to. Dash lived long enough. You know, uh, he, apart from that, he uh, baited with Dash, right? I mean, I think uh, mm -hmm. Evan certainly should have gone for for Poe first. That was the danger in the end game. He LPS his whisper something fierce, so. Yeah, so apart from that rules kerfuffle at the end, I mean, that was pretty likely the, the outcome. All that it really depended upon was Dash's HLC shot rolling all four, and it did. Yeah, absolutely. You know, had he rolled only three or two, uh, the Zeta would have lived and killed him. So, uh, Aaron, why don't you go grab someone who doesn't look dazed, whoever looks like they can be the most coherent, and we'll, uh, we'll give them a quick interview on stream. Okay, I'll bring them here to you. Are you okay doing the interview yourself? Yeah, not a problem. All right, we got about 70 people in chat. That's a solid, uh, solid number for a, a Thursday night. We're hoping to do this streaming a little more often, and uh, we'll certainly let you know. We'll be posting on uh, Reddit and YouTube when uh, we've got more streaming coming and more more content coming. I'll be posting this finals up on uh, on Reddit certainly whenever when VTTV Live gets it uh, reposted on YouTube. And you, yeah, a couple of days. Until then, you can rewatch it on VTTV Live and on Twitch and on YouTube. Uh, VTTV Live servicing the GTA with all the best FFG content probably in the world. And uh, we're, we're just waiting on uh, one of our two finalists to come in and uh, have a chat on stream. All right, guys, we've got Dan here from Game School. Repping it right. Oh, where we go? Where hey, we everybody. Go? Right here. Representing Scarborough East Side. Absolutely. Nice to say hello to everyone. Yeah, this is your second season with the PTL? Second season, and boy, am I happy to be a part of it. Uh, yeah. It's really inspired a lot of uh, new players from my store. Uh, there's a lot of support from the PTL um, that give little doodads and knickknacks you just can't find anywhere else. We, and, we uh, try to do the, the rarer tokens in acrylic, absolutely. My goodness, you, uh, I have customers who are just ravenous for those things, and uh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's it's really great because... It's nice to hear. It's, it's the... It's the splinter, it's the toe hold, it's the yeah. foot in the door, right? Uh, and then people come out, they start seeing uh, what a great community the PTL community is. That's what uh, really got uh, me involved because uh, my my store is all about supporting the community and yeah. getting um, people out. And uh, PTL is just a great example of uh, what you can do on a mass scale. And we try to be as inclusive as possible. So you play one game, you get an altar card, you know, you play four games, half your matches, you get those acrylics, right? right? We try to put all of the where we don't charge membership, you know, it's all donation based. We try to put all of that money towards not first place. You might get a little something, but we try to put all of that towards those participation prizes because those are the people that really matter. Uh, they, they, they're the ones that love it. I mean, yeah. uh, if you if you can speak to the heart of the game, Evan um, Evan was coaching me on how to fly my own list <laughs> before before I the played. match. 
Yeah. Right, well, that, I mean, oh, thanks, because uh, I, I looked up to him. A, lo a sure. lot of fellow PTLers look up to him. He's doing really well in something called Vassal, which yeah. I'm unaware yeah. he of, really. He plays online. Evan's a solid player. He's been uh, with the league, not, I'm not going to say from the beginning, but certainly from uh, an early season. He's played uh, for uh, a long time. Right. Yeah. yeah, so uh, I was a little intimidated playing, uh, as, playing as, Evan. That, as you should be. You, you've <laughs> Now, uh, I was like, oh, my God, you beat Eric Z, you beat uh, Kelvin Lau, and you were like, uh, are these good players? I'm like, absolutely. You know, so you've gone over some, like, PTL greats. Some of these guys are on uh, some some uh, international rankings on uh, on the board game rankers. So some of these guys have gone to system opens and, and big tournaments in the States and right. done quite well. And uh, you've certainly earned your place uh, here at the top table. Oh, well, I do appreciate it. And uh, just to speak to all of my opponents, again, I've had, I've had a consistent... Um, good spirited run and yeah. every one of my opponents has, um, has just been uh, top notch in terms of their personality and yeah. their and their engagement with me as a new player or newer player uh, again e even our final match I, I mean and just for the record Evan and I didn't want to <laughs> to end on a, a misplay no but, of course not but from the beginning of the match there's been several I mean uh, Evan started by missing his I'm, uh, I'm his sure I'm sure if Evan had won because you didn't get your dash shot at the end of the game, I mean, that doesn't feel like... That's a hollow victory to me, right? Like, that doesn't yeah. feel like, a, really like a, a, a great play. No, right? no, like no. You can punish your opponent for missing a trigger, yeah. but then you're you're winning because you are you know the rules a little better. You're like, ha, yeah. ha, ha, ha. Oh, I've man. got it over him. Uh, you know what? Yeah, it's, and, rough. Uh, it's, it's a rough way to win. Like it's, it's, yeah, and yeah. Uh, for all those who uh, feel the same way, just know that I feel it the worst, uh, especially since Evan's been a perfect gentleman in the entire game helping me out even he's incredible moves. just uh, just back from finland i believe he was in northern finland a week ago oh right and uh, yeah yeah he was uh, telling me about his um his uh one-year-old and yeah, just, yeah. Uh, how in, in daycare and, and you know so there's that camaraderie right like absolutely we're just, we're just connecting as individuals and uh he started right off by saying you know what let's 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 just have some fun here and yeah. uh and it really was oh that's great yeah no i know um his one-year-old came a little early, and he'd gone to Wixom in Detroit for, a, for, a, for an X-Wing Regionals. Right. Came first in Swiss, and then had to do the eight-hour drive home at midnight, oh my missing the cut the next day because the baby came early. Just booked it for uh, booked it back to Toronto. You know what I mean? Talk about. Um, I mean, that's great. That's yeah, just uh, a heart in two places. But that's, uh, I mean, that's the yeah. dedication we see from from these X-Wing players. They really love the game, and they want to see that ideal game. Right, like you not taking that shot is a hole in the game. It doesn't make it that perfect game. Right? I, I, yeah, and I and I see that. Um, I see that now because I was like, how can my ship possibly go back on? The, like we took him off. What what if I kill that guy? And then where am I going to position myself? Uh, Absolutely, it was just a very very strange. And then you shot a, a Zeta leader there. Oh, it's not Zeta leader. Zeta spe the Zeta specialist. I, I shot at him because yeah. if I were able to PS kill. Him, then he couldn't shoot. You wouldn't die. And then die. I wouldn't die. And then I have to go back on the mat. And then Evan just looked at me and said, "You know what? That's With the game. one health whisper, you know what I mean? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So uh, you know, just an inspiration in terms of his, uh, you know, fair play. And uh, yeah. I, I really appreciate. it. And again, that's something that I think you try and foster at game school. Absolutely. Especially, I'm gonna give you a, a chance to shout out here. You do a lot of after school programs in the area. Yep. You you do board games with the kids. Board games. Right. That's something that I know that that really matters to you. The fair play, the good play, like uh, not just following the rules because that can be a little off, yeah. but making sure that it's it's good play. You know what? Right. Uh, structure is always important. You know, kids yeah. growing up, uh, even families can use structure. Uh, it really helps. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, if we, if we look at what P, uh, the PTL has done with just um, its camaraderie, uh, that, that's exactly what I'm trying to do with Game School. I'm trying to infuse a healthy gaming culture in my surrounding community, in schools, just yeah. to get people back at the table and sharing some meaningful time with one another uh, and building on relationships. Because I feel that... Um, you know, with, without a solid foundation, a bedrock, if you will, yeah. to springboard off of, um, you know, everything is a little bit more difficult. Right? And I know you're a scout leader as well. Oh, I, I, so, I volunteer. I mean, uh, you, you give a lot of time, especially, I mean, like, I'm, I'm, I want to say you're, you're a fantastic human oh, being. Well, well, but it's well, certainly... Uh, oh, all right, all right, all right. But certainly... I'm, I'm not actually a scout leader, for the record. Oh, you're not. Okay, I, all right. I've done right. fundraising for the scouts. Okay, okay. And they're welcome at my store. So, <laughs> Tony... All right, Shout and out to Tony. Tony. Tony's a scout leader. Yeah, Jeff Tony. Pickles is a scout leader. Yeah, both of them play in your store. So, yeah. you know, for kids, 
the the board games bring that critical thinking, the, like the decision trees, the yep. math, oh like all goodness. these are important skills, yeah, not just absolutely. for for university, but for high school, for just for life in general. Absolutely. For like bringing those like socializing skills in is yeah. that super important, especially for a kid that may be like, I'm gonna stay in and play board games rather than go outside and socialize with kids. It's still a form of socialization and and dealing and talking to other people. It's, it's yeah. certainly very important. You know, you know what, Devin, you're you, you're nailing the head with that uh, socialization. Uh, or interpersonal skills is something right. that we need to develop just like any other skill. Yeah. Uh, if you want those washboard abs, hey, you got to eat right, you got to go to the gym. There's no there's no getting around that. You still have to talk to people at the gym. Yeah. Talk, <laughs> you still, you still got to talk to the front desk people. You still got to ask for them, someone to wipe something down. You still have to be able to talk to people at the gym. Well, yeah. no, like that, that's still, a great point. Exactly. It's still important no matter exactly. where you are. If, if I have some great ideas up in my... Uh, my noggin, brain, if I, noggin, if I yeah. can't communicate them, yeah. Um, well, yeah, we're not doing anybody any good. Yeah, but, absolutely. Uh, but anyways, how, was, how was your season this year? Uh, you know, you play at Game School, you run Game School, you run a couple other stores in the area. Yeah. You know, you're a busy guy. You're busy getting guy. games in versus some of your regulars. I mean, that's a, that's a, a great time. You're, you're running some of the, your Upsilon lists. You're running some ghosts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I love it. I, I'm one of the guys who will look, um, look to the leadership uh, from fellow PTLers in terms of... Um, you know, uh, like there's this meta, and I sure. flew a meta list today. Uh, my my friend uh, Tony actually recommended because I had the pi pilots available. Yeah. And um, uh, I have an artist uh, from my school, uh, or, or the who works at Game School, the uh, yeah. uh, uh, Petra Bacchus. Uh, she she painted a pull up. Uh, oh, beautifully fantastic. for me, and so uh, there, there was the fact that I didn't have the pilots, but there was also the fact that um, they actually had some uh, paint on them, and they were painted beautifully. So I wanted to showcase them, and, and the okay. dial I won. Yeah, See, that, again, there you go, PTL prizing. Yeah, PTL prizing. Yeah, and we give the, away painted chips, we give away painted dials, we give away uh, those acrylics acrylic to everybody. So if you donate yeah. money, and I, you were generous enough oh, to donate to do money that. last season, happy if you get that. seven games in, if you donate a little bit of money, yeah, you yeah. get your name in that draw, you get some painted chips, you get some painted dials. You know, not everyone has the the talent to get in there or the or the money to pay someone to paint for them. Oh yeah, you right? should see you should see my uh, <laughs> my efforts uh, are, <laughs> are certainly rudimentary at best. Uh, but but I, again, where I, I get my uh, leadership from the uh, more senior PTL guys, even you, Devin. I, I well, thank again, you so much. Thank I, you so much. I was just mentioning earlier before the game started just how um, enthusiastic you were about playing and uh, just yeah. make, make it fun. And uh, and you're that. Um, like uh, the, again, that structure. You, yeah. you need the structure. Yeah. You need the positive attitude, and those come together. Unironically, I was at a regionals in Montreal last weekend. I got, I won a sportsmanship award, an Anglo oh, won of course. a Quebec, a Quebecois sportsmanship award. I was shocked. Did you see that? I was shocked. Uh, merci, merci. Uh, <laughs> shout out to the to the Quebec. Uh, the Quebec scene. Oh, yeah. A couple of people no, recognized me and game. Moss from uh, from our time here commentating on the PTO right, uh, right. Over on the mic. We got uh, some big fans out there in Quebec, and uh, big shout out to them. Uh, bonjour, uh, les guys. Mes amis. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, nous, nous amis. Nous amis. Uh, our yeah. friends. Our friends. Uh, I'll accept that. Yeah. There we go. Uh, they they made the the event bilingual for all of us Anglo's coming in from uh, Ontario and right, right. Uh, it was a great scene. Yeah. I was uh, super shocked to to even even be considered for something like that. And uh, uh, I'm I'm not shocked because you know, uh, I, I see it I see it every time you guys come out uh, you make your way out east. Uh, there's that nice uh, and, and it can easily go the other way, right? Like you can have a super competitive team. That that just goes out to other other stores oh, right, and yeah. wrecks face and, and just takes everything. And I know uh, the champ, the hair, the Alan himself came out, won your store champs. Oh yeah. And I don't think anyone feels bad about that. We come out, we we you know where most of us lose, some of us win. Yeah. You yeah. know we try and have a good time. We give out PTL swag right. and we try to make people not feel bad that we showed up. No, and that's no. something that we try to to propagate. And that we want it, we're going because. We're like super into the game, and we'll go yeah. wherever it is. Yeah. And we want to go. We want to have a good time. Right. And we don't want the locals to feel shitty about it. Like we don't want, like, oh, game school is part of the PTL. You're like enough of the guys are getting out there, and you've got your own little community, and we're hoping to augment that and like yeah, grow yeah, yeah, the yeah. PTL. Yeah. And but we don't want you guys to groan when some downtown guys show up, and you're gonna be like, oh, I'm not gonna win anything. Well, and that's that's where I want to say that you know I have some 12 year old players, 10, 10 year old, 15 year old, like a, a whole group of um, you know youth uh, getting into the game, and when uh, these senior guys come by, uh, they're nothing but class. Again, they're helping them out every step of the way. Yeah. Um, you know, Thank miss you so triggers. Much. But but just to tie it back to 
all the way up to the championship match. Yeah. <laughs> Here we are with Evan. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of the top tier guys. Miss Class Triggers act. galore. Class act. And yeah. and we're still having a fun time and we're rolling some dice. And again, you know, if some if you're not a nationals or a regionals, you know, your opponent might like punish you or call you on that. But here we strive to something greater, like a yeah, pure that's game. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it's like you if you win by the Miss Triggers, uh, it's yeah, not it a great felt game. Really weird. Yeah, it's gonna feel. It's felt gonna really feel. Weird. You know, you're not gonna feel great with your win, and Evan's not gonna feel great. Like, like if Evan wins in that situation, like if he comes back with Whisper, you know, hunts down your ships, you've taken Dash off. Right, you right. know, if he's able to come back from that, you know, he's gonna have to live with the fact that he won, not because he outflew you, yeah. but because like you forgot something you were yeah, really yeah. supposed to do. No, it, right? Exactly. Or just because there was a, a misinterpretation uh, of a, a crit, a crit yeah, card. Exactly. Right? It's really rough. No, he was all smiles. Uh, we shook hands. Um, you know, I'd, be, I'd be over there uh, shooting it up with him if yeah. I wasn't here shooting it yeah, up with Yeah, we're dra dragging over here to get, yeah. uh, chat with us. Oh, it's my pleasure. So we're going to do the uh, the draw. There's going to be a prize draw okay. sometime next week. Excellent. Um, I did this last season. I'm going to do it again this season where uh, first place draws last. Oh. So uh, you're going to get uh, whatever's okay. left, I'm afraid, uh, there, Dan. Fine. But well, you'll you'll get something fun, I'm sure. Well, it's I, always a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of jank. Maybe some stickers. Maybe some pencils. Maybe some ooh. and then and maybe some uh, maybe some. Who doesn't have enough pencils? Maybe some acrylics. Maybe some uh, nationals swag that you. I know you couldn't make the nationals or regionals. No, nope. there'll be some of that sw official swag in there. Some PTL swag. And, so yeah, and that's fine. And, and just so everybody knows, uh, whoever, whenever I have historic tournaments or anybody who comes and plays, I always buy extra. You've tournament been super kits. generous with I just everything you do. Hand them out. Uh, uh, it's been incredible. Uh, but but I if they're if I'm just gonna end up with stickers, I, I think there's an argument that could be made uh, since I won the PTL that maybe that trophy uh, ends up at game school. It's that, gonna have your name on it. Uh, it's gonna have your name on it. At, at, at my competitor? Oh, okay, all right. Yeah. How, how does this work out? When I win... Uh, how many how many trophies are we gonna leave at game school? You got the... You won the newbie trophy last season. Oh, yes. Doing the, you were the top-ranked newbie player. You got the, uh, the cantina scene. Uh, the painting, uh, I don't and then know, you're gonna man. get the trophy this season. You're gonna take everything? No, no, I don't. I don't need to take everything. Just you know, because uh, there, there's another season starting up uh, within yeah. a week or so or soon. All right, you know, all right. Uh, I, you know, in the game store. That's certainly something we can negotiate. It could sit at your uh, store for a couple of weeks, get a big photo with it. Well, That's something we could do. Yeah, yeah. Well, it would, yeah. it would certainly if we if we're in a building, yeah. uh, <laughs> building a community. if we're building a community and uh, we see that there's a. You know, an epicenter, a mecca, if you will, sure. of X-wingers right, in the neighborhood. Right. Perhaps I'm, uh, I'm, I'm being convinced. I'm yeah, being yeah, convinced. But perhaps uh, you know, there's a beacon, a beacon, yeah. to call. You know, and, and by I, beacon, I can, you mean a two foot tall giant gold X-wing that can sit on your on your counter and you can brag about for the next eight weeks. I feel like I mean, I, <laughs> <laughs> isn't this all for bragging rights? I mean, I think that's what it I is. I mean, that's right? all. That's all you get for winning is that's bragging exactly rights. That's right. the only thing you win. Right. So I feel like that's not an unfair ask. Okay. It's not it's all right, not all right. outside the realm of possibilities. No, I just I wanted to broach it. I'm, I'm, just make I'm, sure it was on camera. I'm so, definitely uh, being convinced. I'm yeah, definitely yeah, being convinced yeah. that that might be what happens. Right. We got enough guys. We, we can, uh, you know. I, got, I trust you. I got a family van. I trust you. I trust you. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a genuine pleasure, Devin. Oh, thank you so uh, much for coming so much. out. Congrats yep. on your run. Uh, uh, and again, you you uh, you bumped out some great players, and that proves, I think, oh, that you are in fact uh, a great player in the PTL. You are exactly the player and the attitude that we strive thanks, for in the PTL. And you I'm glad that. I'm glad that you and Game School have chosen. You guys definitely chose to be a part of our community, yeah. and that's something that. I am a, extremely grateful for last season and this season. I'm well, really glad you guys glad that you guys are a part of it. Thanks, man. It's really nice of you to say that. All right, I'll see you next season. Okay. So we've got Evan here, our runner-up for season ten. You had a hell of a season. You were on top of the Swiss. Uh, well, Swiss. You were on top of the sort of the free for all that is is our league. And uh, coming into the the finals here, uh, what were your thoughts? Bringing uh, like what was the the thought behind your list? Tony said. He had Poe and Dash available, and he was really worried about doing well. So he uh, he brought he brought plot armor. You know, I've always planned to play Whisper, and actually, legitimately, never played Whisper in all the years of playing X-wing. So I, I just I felt like I wanted to play Whisper. Sure. I, I took a bit of gamble that there wouldn't be anything about PS9, and there was. Oh no. Um, so that that didn't help, but not taking away from Dan, he played it well. Ah uh, yeah, he definitely. Uh, I was really wondering about your decision to go for Dash, because I figured in the end game Whisper could hunt Dash, but. You know, in the end game, Poe can really play with Whisper. You know, black one off that target lock, sort of. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I the way he set up Dash initially, it was the target I had. Uh, that's I, that's I, true. Yeah. 
I mean, I, maybe I should have switched over to Poe. I, I, I think I probably got a bit in my head that Poe had PS11 and I couldn't let Whispering Net get near Poe. Right. Um, so yeah. so maybe, maybe it got a bit in my head. I, I, the turn he burned out Slam, I actually, I was really happy where I was coming into that turn. I forgot he had the burnout slam, uh, and I knew in that turn I went the four straight. I'd have shots at him with all three ships, uh, and then I could free bank around the rock house beside, and I'd have shots on dash again, likely at range one or two. Okay. Um, I've got a burnout slam. He burnout slammed, uh, which was and the right. And sort call. of trapped your SF around that And all of a sudden, that rock that I was yeah. completely fine with, I couldn't turn around it, and I was yeah. in a terrible spot. Um, and I actually, I, the, that dial took a long time set because I was contemplating switch over to Poe on that turn. Yeah. But I didn't even have a great turn to get or a way to get on Poe. No, I don't think you did. No, I, I, I was considering slooping off to the right, um, and that would kind of get me around on Poe. Uh, but then I'd be taking range three stress shots on Poe and leaving Whisper taking shots from Poe. Um, and I mean, you got Poe down in the end, but. That, that shot right there. That dash. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, dash, yeah, you yeah. did get dash. Well, actually, I technically didn't because we, we missed dash the shot and then dash was actually alive and killed the SF before I killed him. Yeah, we, we caught that, sent Aaron up. Uh, well, I, don't know, I don't know if Aaron Dater, our, our table judge, just give him a shout out again, caught that. Well, actually, the funny thing is it wasn't the crit. We just missed his shot. Yeah. So it had nothing like it had nothing to do with the, the uh, PS0 crit or anything like that. We just. Oh, really? Yeah, we just forgot the shot. So, All right. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. fair enough. I actually when 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 Aaron came over, I was like, no, Dash did shoot. No, wait, no, no, he didn't shoot. Yeah. You're right. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So it was just legitimately both of us missed Dash's shot. Fair enough. How was your How was your season uh, this uh, this season? I was 10? a lot of fun. I, I you had a lot of fun. Um, you got yeah. you got seven games in. You were seven games you're, in. You were near the top of the the pile. Yeah, into six and one with my one loss to Tim. So I got my revenge in the semis on Tim at least. You you did. That was um, a great game. It was a lot of fun. Um, I don't know. I love the format. I, I oh. had a lot of a lot of fun games. Some good original trilogy games. Um, you know, I got my my three D seventies, which I, I love that uh, that list will come back. That list. I gave it a shout out on the Sea to Sky Squadron podcast. Your friend Jeff. I heard Jeff. Yeah. Your Jeff gave you a shout out on the Sea to Sky Squadron podcast. I mean, that's making some waves. It's a beautiful list. It's fun. I I almost flew it in Montreal. I I. I I, I chickened out. I did. Uh, I flew my in your face from out of space, which we demoed just before this game. Uh, but I, I flew it five times and lost four of them before the before Montreal. Yeah. So you need reps with the T7. It, it's to a make funny it list. You, you know what that list? You just need to be able to run away. You need to accept their turns when you're just not going to take any shots and you're going to run, regroup, yeah. get your your tokens back, etc. Now I, I find you a very conservative player, and it's those conservative. Like I'm going to make sure I move out of arc. And then make that barrel roll, take that boost, like get away. Though, like those maneuvers, I don't immediately think of. It's sort of like, all right, be a little more conservative, get him out, come back around, like eat a couple of turns. Yeah, that's a, that conservativeness is probably what I needed in that game because I, I I kept trying to chase. You were pretty on dash yeah. the whole uh, game. And with the barrel rolls, I just I couldn't get to him. Yeah, we were really. Um, I now Dan forgot a couple of lone rolls. Yep. But it was. Uh, Certainly not something we expected. All that barrel rolling. Yeah. Sometimes he would be like, "Yeah, he's gonna barrel roll and he would focus." Sometimes he would be like, "Okay, he's got to focus in the situation and barrel roll out to that range three, guaranteeing that lone will free roll." Yeah. I, suppose. I was surprised by all the barrels too, because he didn't have any focus on Ray. No. So I, I, I was actually kind of happy when I saw the barrel rolls, and then he never needed to focus. And, and then he, he would never need it. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Like certainly the dice uh, didn't really help in that game. You needed no. the dice in a few places to like go your way. Yeah, I, like I, that, that Ford I blank on from Whisper. I, I needed some luck for sure. I mean, at the end of the day, yeah. I, don't take it away from Dan. Like, no, I mean, I, a great player. I mean, he made he made the right choices to punish your your uh, your dice modifications, right? He stripped it. He could have stripped the, the target lock of Zeta Leader, of Zeta Specialist. I keep saying that. He stripped the, the target lock of Zeta Specialist. He could have stripped it there. Instead, he stripped it from Whisper, which is the right choice, yes. rolling four blanks. Yeah. That's when you needed it. Yeah, yeah. And I had two blank outs on the SFs, too, that, that didn't help. And, I mean, Dash takes a hit or a crit going into that round. Right, that's, that's a that's a different round, right? He could take that zero the turn before or the turn after. I mean, that's huge. Yeah. Now, then the whisper probably wasn't going to solo Poe, so probably didn't matter that much. But no, and and Poe as we were we were you'll have to rewatch the uh, the video, but Poe is more expensive than Whisper. I mean, that's a rough end game for you, right? Yeah, yeah. I, it's a two hour game, so I, I didn't really worry about the points. I was I'm, one of us is going to die before we get to the two hour. Fair enough. It's a little bit of a different game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and maybe I still should have gone for Poe, but. Yeah. You know, hindsight. Now, I know you're a new dad, but do you think we're going to see you out for Canadian Nationals coming uh, St. Paddy's Day, March 16, 17, yeah. 18? I think that'll be the next time I play X-Wing, probably. The next, but the next time you play X-Wing? But, uh, yes, I'll definitely be out for Nationals. Now, that's only only six weeks away. Do you think that uh, you'll be flying 
something similar to this or, or no. a different squad? You know what? Those I, three T70s? I, you know, I'd love to do the three T70s. I feel like since I don't play enough, I'm kind of tempted to go the meta route and, and do something that's going to give me the best chance. All right, but uh, what's what's meta now? Is it going to be that, like a, a Kanan fan? You're going to be playing on Vassal between now and then? Yeah, we'll, we'll just get some Vassal games in. Um, I don't know. I love Asajj, so maybe something like Asajj. All right. Um, now, Tim's a great Asajj player. I mean, you got, I'm sure you guys could uh, you know play on Vassal and uh, workshop something pretty nasty. Yeah. Uh, now... I brought up Vassal just because I know you made your way into the deep core. Mm -hmm. You didn't start in the early the early rounds. You've worked your way up there. I mean, I know that's a rough ladder. Like, how was how was your last couple of Vassal seasons been? Yeah, oh, this last Vassal was great. I was in a group with Paul Heaver and Phil Horney, who are both awesome people. Yeah. Um, Phil Horney might be coming to Canadian Nationals. Oh, yeah? Awesome. He was registered to the last one. He was registered to this one. Phil, if you're watching, you got to show up. I mean, I'm in love... The reason I fly swarms or can fly swarms the way I do is because of his original movement guides, his Vildo, oh, yeah? on on the Board Game Geek forums. Like his original breakdown of how ships move is beautiful if you haven't seen it, and uh, it's it's fantastic. So I, I really hope that he'll make it to a Canadian event yeah. someday. He's a lot of fun. I, the only time I played him in person was at uh, Detroit Regionals a few years back, which and, you had to bail on. And, and I did bail, but I beat him in the sixth game of Swiss first. And yeah, then, and then I mean, lost. You, him. you were top on Swiss. You were six zero that day. Yeah. And, yeah. and then lost in the first round of the cup. But you know. Oh, well, that happens. Yeah. That happens. Uh, so I think we're going to wrap it up. Thank you so much for coming out. You're always a stalwart of the PTL. How many seasons here. have you played in uh, now? I think five? Four. Four. Yeah, Four I, or five? I started a year and a bit ago, and that, but I missed the last season because, you know, being a dad and all kind of gets the I mean, that happens. Yeah. So hopefully we'll see you out at Nationals. I really hope for that. We've got uh, a bunch of events coming up. Nationals in March. There's uh, another couple of uh, events in Montreal, and then we've got PTL Open in September. So hopefully we'll see you and out there. I for... will be there for PTL Open. Oh, for sure. fantastic! You'll be there at the PTL Open. How you went? You came to the last PTL Open. Yeah, right? I lost in the semis. I think. Oh, there you go. You brought Dengar Fen to that, right? Dengar Fen. Yeah, P double PTL, 64 point Dengar. Yep. Oh Good. my gosh! <laughs> and you, uh, how did you do? You did. Uh, is it three regionals ago here at, at 401 Games? The last 401 Games yeah. regionals, you brought Dengaru, if I'm yeah. not. Like the, you know, the Dengaru, the first week of Dengaru. Yeah, I was, I was so excited because I found the list on Basel. And, and no one was playing it. You and like three other guys, yeah. and you were all in the top four. Yeah, and, and so I, I was super excited. And, and at the time, it wasn't meta. So I thought it was a really like interesting, different list that flies so differently. Right. And then the week before Toronto Regionals is when it, the U.S. Nationals, where, where, where it became where a thing. Where Burling takes it to the top. Yeah, so all of a sudden, it was not this cool, different list anymore. Everyone hated it. And, yeah. But. I was surprised. A lot of people were surprised. I was still flying the seventh ice war, and I almost beat Spencer McClung, the former Canadian National Champion, round three. I lost by, by points. My points. I got his Manaru down. I got Dengar to half, and I just lost the. Well, run. well I wish you beat him because he was the one who beat me in the finals of that regional. So. Right, yeah. right. I lost by by point. Oh, <laughs> it was rough. And then I was undefeated by Dengaru afterwards. I think I went uh, eleven and one versus Dengaru. Well done, because that's not an easy matchup. That. So that's yeah that's with Tie Fighters. I wrote, I wrote a very popular article on. Yes, uh, I, I remember Bay. reading it. Yeah, uh, I got a lot of flack for that. Some people from uh, Australia told me that I only fly against bad Dengaru players. But uh, well, you didn't play me. So. Oh, see, there we go. All right. All right, I think we're going to wrap it up. Thank All right, you very Evan. much. Have a good one. Yeah, absolutely, and I look forward to seeing you uh, and playing you next season. Yes.